First, we will talk about the main characters. That's mainly Tion. Tion is your typical Jakob Jakob's lead. He enjoys collecting comics, and he's a photographer, and for the sake of this story, he likes music. Then there is Zane. Zane is slightly more interesting and a lot more annoying. He's a wannabe Casanova. Keyword, wannabe. He's not particularly great with the ladies, he's actually pretty terrible with the ladies, but sometimes his overconfidence gets him luck. Unfortunately, he's usually far spontaneous for his own good, and more so for Tian's own good. So, he causes a lot of the conflict in the story. Our story begins when Miss Pinar sends Tian and Zane to go and deliver a letter to Mr. Marks. There's a legend that goes around the school that Mr. Marks once kissed Miss Pinar during the school dance. Although, there's so many retellings of it, nobody actually knows if it's true or not. Once Sian and Zane reach Mr. Marx's class, they discover that he is not there. Although the door is unlocked, they go in to deliver the letter. Tian dumps the letter onto the pile of rubbish that is already on Mr. Marx's desk, and he gets ready to leave. But Zane has other plans, as Zane typically would. He goes ahead and puts lipstick on a bust of Mozart. Obviously, Tian is shocked at this and is just about to exclaim, Are you crazy? when he gets interrupted by yours truly, Mr. Marx, entering the classroom. Mr. Marx is more concerned of Zane dropping the bust and asked them both to come back at the end of the day. Upon their return to Mr. Marx's class, they find that he is in the middle of an orchestra re rehearsal. They decide that they might have to come back later, but Mr. Marx comes and beckons them in anyway. He gives them a quick quiz on postmodernism, tells them why their lipstick on Mozart was postmodernism, and then is about to send them on their merry way. That is, until your typical school jock, Frick van Tonde, he plays the fullback for the rugby team, in Afrikaans that's the heel achter, um, calls out and exclaims, They're in a band, sir! Actually, Zayn and Tian had just sometimes played guitar together. They tried to mimic songs that they hear from CDs and such. But they've, but they've never actually been able to write their own song. They've always failed whenever they tried. When Mr. Marx asks them, what is your band name? Both of them exclaim different things, being Hard Drive and Warthog. And suddenly, they're signed up to enter a school band competition. Remove. That's R-U-M-O-E-R. -E that's an important spelling. Keep that in mind. Spelling does count in this context. Chapter 3 is just a quick summary of Zane and Tian's past. I've already kind of said that during the Chapter 2 summary. So skipping ahead to Chapter 4, Zane decides that it is his duty to go and share the information about this band to everybody he knows. He goes around putting up posters to everybody. Unfortunately, Zane, being Zane, messed it up. He misspelled audition, and the time... He wrote, quote, tomorrow after school. How are we ever not going to know when tomorrow after school comes, Zane? Is it today? Is it tomorrow? Yeah. The next day, Tian tries to bunk school, but unfortunately his father is a doctor and knows every ailment in the book. Tian can't bunk school. It's not possible for him. So he has to go. When he gets to school, the school day goes by, and suffice it to say, after Zane's spectacular work on the poster. Nobody pitches up to his audition. They're sitting there, they have nothing to do. So, in typical fashion, Zane, being his spontaneous self, decides to move the audition. And off they go to Mr. Marx's orchestra. So there they go, barging into Mr. Marx's orchestra class. And they stand there before them. Zane gives Mr. Marx a quick... I want to use your class instead of you kind of lecture. And then Mr. Marx, shockingly enough, agrees to Tian's dismay. But first Tian and Zane have to do a quick performance for the orchestra. They only really know the orchestra can play, but can Tian and Zane play? Zane and Tian's song goes spectacularly well. They get a massive applause from all of the people in the audience or in the orchestra and they are ready to begin auditions, but nobody is willing to try. Eventually, Frick van Tonder, yes, Frick van Tonder, the jock person, decides to stick up his hand. He goes down and plays the drums for them, and does a terrible job. They obviously figure out that this was all meant as a giant joke from Frick, and he's just there to impress his friends, and he goes back up and sits down. Nobody else is willing to try for the, for the drums. So they try vocals. 
They get quite a few auditions, some were better than others, but none of them actually had the right Vuma. Eventually someone convinces a person called Liesl to audition for the vocals. Liesl is the smartest and, according to Tian, the prettiest girl in the school. According to Tian, note that it is an opinion, not a fact. She doesn't want to audition at first, but her friends convince her. They start chanting her name, Liesl, Liesl. So she goes up and she sings. And she sings perfectly. She has the rhythm, she has the beat, she has the attitude. She has the voice, especially, and she's seemingly the perfect person. She stops halfway through the song and is about to go sit down again before one of the girls in the back of the class shoots her hand up and says, Wait, play that again. This is Si Bongele, or Bongi for short. I apologize for butchering the pronunciation. The next chapter is just exposition on a guide that Zayn and Tian have compiled about how to talk to girls. It's got stupid rules in it, like Girls like Brad Pitt because he doesn't talk while opening his mouth completely and stuff like that. The most recent addition is Girls like boys who are in rock bands. No wonder Zane was so keen to join. Skipping ahead to their meeting in Milky Lane. Um, they're all still trying to think of band names and some rehearsal times. So far they've had a couple of suggestions, Bongi's being Cupid. Nobody's really keen on any names. Eventually Liesl confesses that she's still not particularly keen to even join the band. Zayn asks why she even bothered auditioning, and Liesl reminds them she actually didn't audition out of her free will, but was rather chanted up by her friends. Eventually, after a bit of back and forth, they read a quote on the back of one of those sugar packets. If life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And the idea of seed lemon is born. Bongi isn't particularly fond of it, everybody else seems kind of keen. Bongi thinks it's a bit boring, but decides to go along with it because everybody else likes it. They come to a deal that they'll practice the auditions for, they'll practice the band and they'll have a trial run for the first week and if they like the way it's going then they'll carry on with it. If they don't like the way it's going then they can drop out, but only after a month. Okay, that's as far as you need to know it, so good luck for your tests.